Organizational Theory and Design, Part 2, Organizational Purpose and Structural Design. The base of the organization is serving a purpose which reflects the thoughts, goals, design and directions of those in the center or at the top, which could include the board, CEO and top management. This purpose will then be delivered to the rest of the organization by, for example, the middle management, which can be seen as a distributor or organizer in line with their commitments to both serve and direct responsibility. In simpler terms, strategy is the process of achieving goals in line with the environment. The strategic direction of the organization is guided by the mission or official goals and the organizational value they want to engender. Meanwhile, it helps bring bigger goals with reach and to stay on the right track. Breaking the goals down into smaller pieces, which is known as operative goals, can be helpful for the short term and further the overall progress. This can be incredibly powerful, because the goals will change depending on the perspective, giving a more clear and understandable picture for the employees in their daily operations. Operative goals can be divided in performance, resources, market, employees, development, innovation and change, and productivity. Two examples of strategy models, Porter and Miles and Snow, the former focuses on three competitive strategies. The first one, low cost leadership, which focuses on selling goods or services cheaper than the competitors. For example, the fast food corporation, McDonald's. Secondly, differentiation. The concept stresses the importance of being unique in relation to others. For example, the computer company, Apple. Third and last, focus. With the intention of pinpointing a specific group or market, the focus as a competitive strategy can be divided into two subgroups referring to the other two concepts by either low-cost, for example the e-commerce tech company Amazon, or differentiation, for example the supercar manufacturer Koenigsegg. The latter, in the Miles and Snow typology here, managers are constantly seeking to find ways of making company strategies fit into and take advantage of the external environment. The model has four different strategies. Prospector. Innovation is focused around companies which prioritize growth and creativity. Tesla, for example, is good at innovating new technologies. The Defender. Focus on stability and cutting back, balancing and targeting current customers. Keep costs down by prioritizing internal efficiency. For example, the manufacturing company BIC. Analyzer combines both the defender and prospector strategy. It's aiming for stability while still allowing for some room of innovation. IBM is one of the companies that falls into this category. Reactor. There is no real centralized strategy in place to identify threats or opportunities. It has a short term perspective and it reacts to immediate needs without any long-term plans in sight. Further, in organizations, the notion of contingency effectiveness is important and relates to what actually works depending on the situation. More specifically, in an uncertain and rapidly changing environment, there must be a fit between the structural and contextual dimension, connecting the two aspects together. In general, there are three main approaches to organizational contingency. Organizations might work on a goal approach focused on achieving the desired level of output. They can be effective when they are able to accomplish their goals. The second school of thought is the resource-based approach, which evaluates the beginning stages of the process and then judges whether or not the organization will have enough resources to achieve a high level of performance. The third approach is the internal process approach. This focuses on the organization's internal work 
and evaluates it by the indicators of health and efficiency. As mentioned before, there are a few different approaches to effectiveness. One model that intends to use the best of several approaches is the competing values model. For example, it balances our concern with different kinds of effective aspects rather than just focusing on one approach. The goal is to find a balance that suits the needs of the organization and its stakeholders. Different individuals have different views and needs, so it can be difficult to find one solution that satisfies everybody. This model highlights two different aspects of organizational values. The focus on internal management versus the external stakeholders and the stability of a top-down control approach versus flexibility to learn and change in a situation. By binding together different perspectives, it can be used to highlight the most valuable areas for the management to prioritize and form a better decision based upon this knowledge. The definition of organization structure includes three main components. Firstly, formal reporting relationship, hierarchy and level of control. Secondly, the overall layout of a company is that it is divided into separate groups of people or as departments, which are all put together forming the greater organization as a whole. Thirdly, as well as the design of system that allows for effective communication and coordination across departments. There are a few varieties between the vertical and horizontal perspective regards to how the communication and information processing is dealt with in different organizations and depending on its structure. In the horizontal structure, one sector can be linked horizontally for instance, when a communication channel is open between the departments, it removes boundaries or blockages that ease the possibility of free-flowing information. Direct contact. The leader can be in direct contact with the employees and delegate tasks easily. For example, liaison roles can be used. and This person is an expert in communication with different departments and areas within the company, ensuring all views are heard. Open work landscapes, meaning people can be closer together for faster or more efficient work. By using a task force, which is a bigger version of liaison role, it's a team that contains representatives from various parts of the business when big problems or opportunities emerge. Potentially implementing a full-time integrator a job or department in charge of coordinating all the different departments in a company, as well as operating in teams where a group of people who are skilled in different areas can be used for different tasks during projects. In the vertical structure, manage and coordinate operations between the top and bottom levels of an organization. Standard hierarchical referral the organization is split into different departments that streamline the information flow in a controlled manner. Lower sections won't be able to solve complicated problems and will instead have to hand them over to higher sections for a solution. By using strict instructions and guides, a policy guidebook with strategies and advice for understanding different strategies, for example, the economic planning. In organizations, the most common department grouping are the traditional models, which include simple, functional and divisional, and the newer models, multifocused, horizontal and virtual network. Though most commonly organizations tend to use more than strictly one model, combining them to a hybrid structure. Simple structure. In smaller firms, for example, startups, where the founder is central and there's close communication between employees and customers, a functional team is good for delivering excellent results. Functional structure. 
Activities in an organization are grouped together by function, with the bottom level grouping people together with similar skills to help them focus on specific tasks or work. Divisional structure. If a company's division generates different products and services, it can be organized based on the individual products, services, product groups, etc. The grouping is dependent on the organizational outputs. It is known for its flexibility and relative ease of use. Matrix structure. A system that combines other structures with one another. It can be a mixture of vertical and horizontal structures and is a good fit for growth companies from all sorts of industries. This structure can help with the coordination and communication, which can be good in a fast-paced environment where there are sudden changes as well when there is unexpected problems occurring. Though, in some companies, applying an open work style and keeping things together might interact with each other, since there is not a single way of going or one person or management to follow. Horizontal structure. It organizes employees around core processes. A horizontal structure might develop from a vertical one through re-engineering which is when the traditional linear direction of responsibilities and reports are cut into layers to span a wider area. Re-engineering is a less defined process with fixed tasks and leaves more room for creativity and self-expressions. This could lead to a more effectiveness in specialized fields of your company. Cross-functional structure, self-directed teams and less bureaucracy lead to better customer service. Responsibility is divided efficiently across more touch points. Virtual network structure. A type of alliance where an agreement between multiple companies can exist. Where each company provides core competencies to create a product or service. An alliance can either be temporary or permanent and is also capable of producing a product at lower cost. Virtual networks and modular structures can be applied to companies that outsource a lot of parts of their business. For example, dropshipping. In line with the rise of e-commerce, which is a retail business model, where companies will focus all their resources on brand building and marketing, while the production and logistics are completely separated to an external provider. There are a few things to consider for evaluating the necessity of what structure is needed depending on the organizational design. Firstly, the structure reflects the work activities or what type of work that needs to be done. For example, in some industrial or production companies, the structure might have to be more strict or static. Secondly, reporting relationships are still important these days despite the flattened hierarchies. Knowing how your role functions and to whom you are accountable can really help employees understand their jobs better. This could also be of greater importance when the complexity increases. Thirdly, regarding the departmental groupings, when companies grow, they tend to need a lot more structure and bureaucracy overall. An organization's need tend to misalign with its environment when, for example, underperformance and a lack of innovation occurs, causing symptomatic conflict within an organization. There can also be causes based on bad decision-making, low adaptability and making necessary changes for optimization or even proper function. Overall, structural design is important in order to balance effectiveness and efficiency with adaptability.